Okay, so we got to talk about Thor Love and Thunder and what an absolute train wreck this movie was. Unfortunately so. I'm not going to really be able to talk about a whole lot of things that I want to talk about without getting into spoilers. So if you haven't seen Thor Love and Thunder yet, first of all, I'm going to save you the trouble. Just don't just don't bother. But uh, if you want to see it and don't want to get into spoilers, I don't want to know things about the movie, then this is probably not the video for you right now. And if you don't care, I'm just going to go into it anyways. There's a lot that I want to talk about in cover, and I didn't write anything down, so this is all off the cuff right now because this has been frustrating me for the last day and a half that I've seen this movie. First and foremost, like, I do enjoy the Marvel films, all right? I really, really like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I think it delved into the horror aspect, which I enjoy with Sam Raimi as the director. I like the character a lot, but I also really like the character of Thor. I like this badass Norse god, doesn't take any shit. You know, my favorite iteration of Thor... I think that they've done so far is in Infinity War, where he loses his brother in the beginning. You actually see that emotion within him. You get, see him, uh, the desperation within him while he tries to forge the Stormbreaker. And when he comes back down to Wakanda, just blasts in and just like, bring me Thanos! Like, that is the Thor that I want. That is not the Thor in this movie. And I feel like they did to Thor in this movie the same thing that Dragon Ball Super did to Goku when that show started, which is take away all of his character development, take away all of his wisdom, take out all of the things that he've learned along the way, all of the experiences that he had, and instead just make him an absolute dumbass. That is pretty much what they did to Goku in Dragon Ball Super, and that is what they did to Thor in this movie. At this point, Thor has been in how many films? Three Thor movies, like four Avengers movies, like, I don't know, probably cameos and others that I don't remember. The guy has been through a lot, He's not to mention the fact that he's supposed to be like thousands of years old anyways. So in this movie, all of a sudden, you know, instead of just Thor having a couple of comedic moments that he's had before, they really double and triple down on all of the comedy aspects that they did in Thor Ragnarok. But at least in Thor Ragnarok, you had enough other stuff there to kind of offset it. You had the Hulk, you had Hela kind of destroying things, you had Asgore, Asgard itself like bursting into flames. You had these big dramatic um, events that were happening that were really impactful, not just for Thor, but for like all of the MCU. Like it made, uh, you know, more sense of the things that they were doing had more cataclysmic results to them. This movie does probably the worst thing a movie can do, and that is it's absolutely forgettable. I am not going to remember anything about this movie in the next two, three months. After it fades away from my mind, I'm never going to watch it again. I'm not going to remember anything that happened in it. And to me, that is the worst thing a movie can do. A movie can be great. It can inspire you. It can give you all these kind of pumped up hype emotions. Or a movie can be so bad that it just becomes absolutely hilarious. It becomes kind of fun to watch in an in a ironic way. And Thor Love and Thunder is just, it didn't hit that mark. It's just bad, but not bad enough to where it becomes actually enjoyable in a ridiculous way. Uh, the first thing I hated was what they did to Thor's character. They just make him an absolute, like, bumbling idiot in this movie, and I don't understand why. The only moment he had where he was even remotely serious is when he was talking to Zeus. But then they completely fucked that scene up because they go to this planet where... All of the gods are kind of like congregating. You have Norse mythology, Greek mythology. You have all of these other gods that they came up with. This could be like a big deal. This could be something really unique and different that we hadn't seen before. And he has this argument with Zeus who, uh, you know, is just like this pompous like asshole who just like enjoys his authority and power and yada yada, corrupted by it. That we've seen a million times before. Obviously, apparently Thor... And the other Asgardians were like the only decent gods that exist in the entire universe. Every other god was just a piece of shit. So that's a thing. And then he, um, you know, after he throws Zeus's thunderbolt through Zeus and you assume that he kills him, there's zero repercussions, at least in this movie. They do allude to it in a post credit scene, but as far as I'm concerned, the post credit scene is not part of the movie. It's a setup for future movies. It's not the movie, if that makes sense. That's how I view it anyways. And you'd think, you just threw a lightning bolt through Zeus. First of all, I would just assume Zeus could just like immediately regenerate because he's goddamn motherfucking Zeus. Um, but then, there's nothing. Like the god, I was expecting, they're in a coliseum filled with gods. I was expecting all of the gods to just immediately attack and come after Thor, but they don't. The, the ship comes in and they leave and then that's all there is to it. And it, nothing happens after that. 
Um, there's a lot of other problems with this movie. It, it's tonally just way too like push to the comedic ridiculous level feels like a like a cartoon that you're watching as opposed to like an actual movie and it feels like they're afraid to take thor seriously and this is one thing that uh used to bother me about comic book movies that i feel like we've sort of gotten away from but now as things tend to cycle around i think that we're coming back to this type of movie which i really don't want is to where the characters uh and the situations are so larger than life that you act like you can't take them seriously in order to put them into a movie. Uh, try to give an example of what I'm talking about. So I would even say, like, take it all the way back to the first Star Wars movie, right? The things that are happening in that movie are ridiculous. Uh, there's a big talking Bigfoot, you know, there's uh, a, your evil villain is some dude in like a respirator mask. Like there's, there's a lot of ridiculous things that are happening in that movie, but all the characters are taking it seriously. To the characters, they don't know the things around them are ridiculous. This is normal. This is the normal world that they live in. So the stakes are high for them and they treat them as such, right? In this movie, Thor Love and Thunder, the stakes are high, but there's so much goofing off and joking around and stupidity that is happening that it's as if you can't take a character like Thor seriously. And we've taken him seriously before in the past, which is another reason why it was so frustrating. And uh, like the situation of dealing with the, the Norse gods and things like that, um, and characters like Korg, it's like every single thing has to be a joke. Or like the astral projection, we gotta turn that into a joke. Or uh, Thor kind of just like bashing through the ceiling, causing all of this debris to fall on people. Like that's not like something he would do, but it's like, oh, he's big, strong, and dumb, so let's have him do this big, strong, dumb thing and not realize uh, this guy is supposed to be like a warrior who has been through an exhausting amount of battle experience. The guy has fought in with warlords, with demons, with frost giants, with Thanos, like all of these characters, and yet none of that experience has meant anything to where he is in this movie. And I've even talked about like the other big things yet. Okay, so we got Jane Foster as Lady Thor. All right, cool idea. Lady Thor exists in the comics. Let's finally bring her into the MCU. Natalie Portman's a great actress. She hasn't really been utilized very well yet. Great opportunity for her. But it just felt very, uh, like they didn't pay any attention to like what that could have meant for her. They give her this sort of uh, plot line where all of a sudden she has cancer and she's like called to the hammer and there's no moment of her grabbing the hammer. It happens off screen and then she shows up as Lady Thor. Uh, so I didn't like that the moment was kind of played down. Also, I get that she's imbued with the powers of Thor. That's cool, I understand that. But when when all of a sudden did she become this like warrior fighter? Per, do you just get do you not just get the powers of Thor, but you all of a sudden also get imbued with knowledge of how to fight? Does that all just like come with the hammer? And the thing that I really didn't like about it was it, like we have set up rules within this universe within the MCU. Uh, there is particular like even though it's fantasy. Even though it's comic books, yada yada, there are rules that exist within this universe. The thing with Thor's hammer has always been, you must be worthy to wield it, right? The, the hammer has to view you as worthy. Now, I am 100% fine with it viewing Natalie Portman as worthy, but that's not what happens. Instead, there's this flashback where Thor and her and the relationship, and Thor tells me, uh, Mjolnir, or however you pronounce it, to protect Jane at all costs. And then like a weird, you know, embroidery appears on the hammer and you are to assume that the reason why the hammer is being used by her and helping her is because Thor asked it to. But this throws a whole like fucking wrench in everything because what does that mean? If Thor can just tell the hammer to do something and it does it, then what is the point of you needing to be worthy to wield it? You know, if he can just tell it, why didn't he tell it, hey, uh, please protect all of the Avengers. That way, if we're ever in a dire situation, any Avenger can pick this up and use it and have the powers of Thor. Because that would be extremely useful when you're dealing with world-ending cataclysmic events like Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet, right? 
but that's not what happened. What happened was only Captain America was able to use it because they had already teased a little bit that the hammer viewed him as worthy, and then when they were in that situation, he was able to use it. It was a big hype moment. It was one of the biggest audience moments in the entire MCU, and so like that attributes value to the importance of being able to use the hammer. So I wanted to see Natalie Portman's character have that I am worthy moment and become the female Thor, but it doesn't happen that way. It happens off screen and it happens because Thor was like, it just, it just devalued the, the event of her becoming the female Thor in my opinion. Then we got to get to Christian Bale. Uh, Christian Bale, phenomenal actor. He's phenomenal in the movie, but he has about seven minutes of screen time. He is the only character that takes what's going on seriously. He is the only character that feels like he's in an actual movie and not just in an Animaniacs cartoon, but he has only, like I said, about seven to ten minutes of screen time, and... Uh, you know, everything that he does is just off stuck. He shows up and then he disappears from the movie for like 25 minutes and he shows up for one little scene, disappears again, and it essentially works that way. His his backstory was shown in the first like four minutes of the movie and it was okay, it was fine, but his character is called Gore the God Butcher. He kills one god on screen in this movie. Everything else is off screen. So we don't get any of these moments of him visiting these gods. He doesn't show up on the god planet. Would have been a perfect place for him to be. Uh, doesn't show up there. And everything else is off screen. We just see like video footage of um, some gods that were slain along the way. And, and that's it. So completely underutilized. And, and just kind of just felt like, you know, another throwaway Marvel villain. And there's been so many of those at this point. Um, so between the, the dumbing down of Thor, uh, between just the constant like barrage of like humor that just was not hitting, was not working, you know, oh, it's not a grenade, it's a speaker. And it, it just, and the, the screaming goats, I could see how that would be funny for kids. And there were definitely kids like laughing in the theater at it, you know, screaming goats, whatever. But it didn't, it didn't work for me. And it just felt like another one of those things where it's like, let's not take anything seriously and let's just turn everything into a gigantic joke. And and it just went way too far overboard in that, in my opinion. Um, I'm sure there is plenty of more things for me to rant about in this movie, but ultimately I was very, very disappointed and didn't like it for those reasons. And it is a little bit more disappointing because I do really enjoy Thor and I want to see that like... Not that he can't have a personality, but I feel like by giving him just nothing to do but like dumb jock humor stuff, like uh, obliviousness, like his humor is funny when it comes from a sense of ignorance because he does not come from this world. So uh, and in this movie, he's pretty much hardly, he doesn't really interact on Earth much at all. There's the new Asgard, but he's, that's the only place that he goes really. Um, so, it, but I find it, more funny when the humor comes from the fact that Thor is just this Norse god trying to interact within like the regular world. It doesn't make sense. You know, that's why it's funny. Um, with Thor just kind of being like brain dead and just sort of being like a big beefy dumb jock character, it just kind of like took, it doesn't make you even like feel like, I don't know. Uh, it's like you're, you're just waiting for the next dumb thing to happen instead of actually feeling on board and hyped up with what this character's doing. You know, I try to avoid doing too many videos talking about things that I dislike. I try to make videos about things that I enjoy and the reasons why I enjoy them. But, you know, every once in a while, you gotta throw in a negative video too, and this one was just stuck in my mind. So if you guys saw Thor Love and Thunder, what did you think about it? I think it's probably one of the most uh, forgettable and disappointing Marvel movies gonna forget about it in the next two months i'm sure but if you guys saw it or if you even liked it what did you like about it am i completely off base put that down in the comments below tell me what you thought about it other than that guys i appreciate you watching this video i really do please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it because it really does help out the video a lot more than you think also comment below and if you want to help out the channel on that deeper level i have a patreon and merch store down below as well other than that guys hope you have a wonderful rest of your day i'll talk to you next time